Okay, John, I got a little demonstration video here for you of the uh, custom uh, retract controller and gear door sequencer that you asked me to build for your Corsair. This is the uh, main circuit board. Uh, you've got some option switches there and the instructions will tell you what they are, but I'll run over them just quickly right here at the beginning. The switch number one reverses the action of the circuit. It's just like reversing the channel in your receiver but it allows you to reverse the way the sequencer operates so that if you've already got something else in the gear channel, uh, this will allow it to be configured the way you need it to be. Um, number two, switch number two, reverses the action of the gear door servos. Uh, in one position they turn clockwise, in the other position they turn counterclockwise. And that just makes it easier sometimes when you're uh, building the plane, getting all the mechanisms set up, gives you the ability to reverse the way the two servos turn. Uh, number three is not going to be used on this sequencer. Uh, and number four chooses between a air or an electric retract system. The only difference being that the air retract setting doesn't move the servo as much so that it doesn't overdrive that air valve. In the electric setting, it sweeps all the way from one side of the channel to the other to make sure that your electric controller uh, knows what it's supposed to do. Uh, okay, just to show you what you're looking at here so you understand what's going on, this is one of my servo testers that I'm using just to provide the signal so I don't have to have a transmitter receiver. It's just easier to do. Here are your landing lights uh, and the three servos, the servo with the red arm on it, uh, is uh, taking the place of the retract controller. You'll see the signal goes from low to high as the sequencer commands it. And you can, you can imagine how that's controlling your uh, gear going up or going down. And then these two servos are your gear door servos. I've got one arm marked there with some uh, zip ties so that you can keep track of which is which. Uh, one servo moves first on say the gear do door down uh, command, the gear down command, the one servo moves first and then the other, and on gear up, that servo moves first and then the other. So it reverses its action um, as you request it. So um, one of the things I wanna explain to you now when you see what's going on here, you see that power is applied, but the sequencer hasn't done anything yet. Uh, I learned a long time ago that these sequencers are, uh, they work better if they don't respond immediately as soon as you turn the power on because sometimes you may leave that gear switch in the wrong position absent-mindedly or because you flew another plane or whatever and you're not ready for the gear to come up but the switch is in the gear up position so the sequencer doesn't do anything except uh, record or memorize which position that switch is in on your transmitter and it won't do anything until you move that switch. Now, once you move the switch the first time, it will either go to the gear up or the gear down position as you've set it up in your radio. But in, on first power up, it doesn't do anything. Now, I'm gonna to toggle it here. And right now, uh, this servo tester is in the position that might would, would be considered gear, uh, gear down uh, with most transmitters. Of course, you can reverse that in your transmitter, but uh, so we're in the gear down position. So now I'm going to move the switch on the radio to gear up. You'll notice that the first thing that happens is the one servo moves and then the second servo moves and then the retract controller. That's so that if the gear doors are not already open, they will be open. And then the first servo closes and then the second. So now your gear are up and the doors are closed. Uh, the, the moving of those servos, um, it might, on the first, especially on that first power up, it might feel a little unusual to you, but the reason that's necessary is that the sequencer cannot communicate with the servo and know where it already is. So if the, if the sequencer assumes that that servo is already open and it's not, then when your gear come up, it's going to tear that door up. So the sequencer moves the gear door from, clo from the close to the open position uh, every time it needs to. 
So now the gear are up and we're gonna to toggle the switch again and now you'll see that the doors open, first that one and then that one and then the retract controller is moved to the gear down position and there's a, a pause created by that little pot right there and now you'll see that yellow LED came on and your landing lights are on. So now we're gonna go back the other way and you'll see that the doors, the retract controller moves first. So your gear come up after the delay set by that pot, then the first door closes and then the second one and the landing lights go off. To go back through that again, the doors open. You'll notice the doors open uh, at a slower pace than just slamming open. Um, I think that's easier on the doors and easier on the linkages and it looks way more scale. And then the landing lights come on. Right now the delay is set for about half of the delay that you can get out of this circuit. So we'll go one more time. Door, uh, I'm sorry, retract controller moves first. The gear are coming up. And after the delay period and the gear are up, then one door closes and then the second door and your lights go out. So I'm going to get this, uh, I'm going to upload this video to YouTube, let you take a look at it, see what you think. And uh, I'll get it, get this boxed up with the rest of your order and get it to you. Thank you, John.